Hi, you guys. Welcome back to part two. Uh, we're talking about public works projects with the New Deal. So one of the points of the New Deal, FDR wants to put young people or young men to work. A lot of people want to work. However, because of the Great Depression, we're still in the depth of the Great Depression, there just aren't many jobs. And so the government will create um, a number of programs to employ people. So the first uh, really public works program that we talked about was the Civilian Conservation Corps, which will end up employing millions of young men on preservation projects, forest preservation, um, helping to create and maintain national parks and the like. A public works administration or the PWA will contract with private construction companies to build roads and schools and hospitals. So if you have a business, if you had a construction business, you could get a contract with the government through the Public Works Administration. However, if you are a worker, you would probably get a job with the Civil Works Administration, not to be confused with the Public Works Administration. The Civil Works Administration, or the CWA, directly hired workers for construction projects. They will end up employing more than 4 million people in construction, uh, in the construction of highways and tunnels courthouses, and airports. So the Public Works Administration contracted with construction companies. The Civil Works Administration will directly hire workers for construction projects. Um, another Public Works project at this time is the Tennessee Valley Authority, or the TVA. The Tennessee Valley Authority built dams to prevent flooding and deforestation along the Tennessee River. This uh, dam will also provide electricity. It will provide cheap electricity uh, to be able to power homes and factories in a region that will cover seven states. Okay, now while he's putting these public works programs together, it's not like he's being met without criticism. No, there is a lot of criticism of the NR, um, of the New Deal. One of those criticisms, I will say the main criticism of the New Deal and a lot of these public works projects is that a lot of people fear that the New Deal was creating a class of Americans that would permanently be dependent upon government jobs. However, it was pretty necessary. People want to work, but there are no jobs. And so FDR will, he sees the need, uh, the need for jobs, and he will create those jobs. And these projects will help um, to make America more, um, I would say, more secure. Uh, it will give us better highways, better hospitals, better schools, and better national parks through these uh, public works projects. So let's continue with the New Deal and agriculture. So with the New Deal and agriculture, we have the development of the Agricultural Adjustment Act. OK, the Agricultural Adjustment Act or the AAA. The AAA starts kind of with with a little popularity, but it will fall out of favor because it doesn't help. Um, I would say it doesn't help every segment of society. And you'll see why in a moment. So the AAA or the Agricultural Adjustment Act authorized the government to raise farm prices by setting production quotas uh, for major crops and by essentially paying farmers to plant less, create more of a demand, keep the prices kind of high, plant fewer crops. So it did succeed in raising farm prices and raising, uh, thus raising farm incomes. Now, the main beneficiaries of the AAA were property owning farmers. It didn't really do anything to help tenant farmers or sharecroppers. And that's the main criticism of the AAA. Essentially, one, I would say one criticism is that a lot of crops were already in fields. And so a lot of farmers were paid to destroy these crops. And that draws a lot of criticism because you're 
destroying crops in a time of widespread hunger. So that's one criticism of the Agricultural Adjustment Act. You are destroying crops in a time of widespread hunger. And so that is seen as very problematic. The other problem is that at this time, nearly 40% of African Americans gained their living as farmers. However, many of them were sharecroppers and the Agricultural Adjustment Act only really benefits property owning farmers. And so because of that, landowners, landowners were paid not to grow crops, which encouraged them to evict thousands of poor tenant farmers and sharecroppers. So if you were a Mexican American tenant farmer or a black sharecropper, the AAA doesn't help you. In fact, it hurts you because you don't get any type of relief. And if this is how you make your living, you get no relief because your landowner, the person who owns the land is being paid to plant less. So they don't need you, right? And so that is another criticism. So let's go back and recall the main criticisms of the Agricultural Adjustment Act. One is that crops are being destroyed at this time. And these crops that were already in fields that are being destroyed are being destroyed at a time of widespread hunger. So it draws tons of criticism. And the other criticism is that it only helps the property owning segment of the population. If you're a tenant farmer or a sharecropper, the AAA does very little to help you. It actually encouraged landowners to evict these people. Now, as if times weren't bad enough, also during this time of the Great Depression, if you live in middle America, especially like Southern, no, it's still middle, middle America, um, blah, 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 blah. If you live, sorry for that, if you live in middle America, uh, things go from bad to worse. From about 1935 to about 1940, uh, the middle of the nation will experience a natural catastrophe known as the Dust Bowl. So first, what is the Dust Bowl? The Dust Bowl was a period of time where there is unusually dry, uh, unusually dry weather in America's heartland. Um, it is the century's most severe drought. And now why was there a Dust Bowl? What causes this Dust Bowl? Well, at this time, a lot of farmers don't have a lot of the technical farming know-how that we have today. And so a lot of uh, this mechanized agriculture, you know, when we go through uh, the period of like the market revolution and the industrial revolution, the second industrial revolution, and we have the creation of um, a lot of these mechanized tools, the problem with this is that these mechanized tools will pulverize the topsoil. When it pulverizes this topsoil, a lot of the native grasses that per naturally prevent the erosion of the soil are also destroyed. So with every season, the soil is getting weaker and weaker. It's getting less nutrient dense. And so when that happens, your topsoil that is usually nutrient, uh, nutrient dense, coupled with this unusually dry weather, your soil is now simply sand. OK, so again, the Dust Bowl was a period of unusually dry weather in America's heartland and is seen as the century's most severe drought. And it's caused by uh, mechanized agriculture. OK, now, where was the Dust Bowl? Where did this Dust Bowl take place? It actually takes place on, I would say, a pretty large piece of land. It's in middle America. So Texas, Colorado, areas of Oklahoma, as well as Kansas are devastated by the Dust Bowl. And what was the impact of the Dust Bowl? So remember, this is a time where uh, the number of farms and farmers have declined. Um, if you're not helped out by the Agricultural Adjustment Act, 
Agricultural Adjustment Act, you're really in a bad place. It's during the Great Depression. And so this will have a pretty devastating impact on farmers in middle America. More than one million farmers will be displaced and it will essentially worsen the depression's impact on rural America. Um, if you've heard of the book, uh, the classic book by John um, Steinbeck called The Grapes of Wrath, The Grapes of Wrath is actually based on the Dust Bowl. Um, look in your module. I also have um, a video that has information about the Dust Bowl as well as first-person accounts of people who lived through the Dust Bowl. So check that out. Um, also check out your slide presentation because I have pictures of the Dust Bowl. During the Dust Bowl, you would get tons of dust storms. I've never been through a proper dust storm, but I could only imagine how devastating these would be. It would scratch the paint off the cars. And many people said that they could feel when it was coming because there would be an increase of static electricity in the air. So please check that out. So um, um, we are frozen. So I'll come back with part three of hopefully three in just a bit.